from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about. It's an ever kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Appreciate your patronage. There have been an awful lot of articles lately. I read, sorry. Been a lot of articles recently. I'm looking at one now in Forbes. And it talks about people getting divorced during a recession. And um, Forbes magazine says that divorce can get even uglier during recessions and bear markets. University of Chicago Business School economist Gary Becker says recession has always been a factor raising divorce rates. In fact, based on studies, Nobel Prize winner Becker conducted back in 1977, published in the Journal of Political Economy, couples that experience any sudden, significant, and unexpected change in income positive or negative, are at risk of divorce. In Michigan, where unemployment is highest in the country at 8.5% in May, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, says here it's been especially hard to break up Jane Fahey, a financial retirement planner in East East Lansing, reports... Get this, that some of our middle-aged clients, both men and women, have had to move back in with their parents. A couple's house is usually the biggest marital asset, and the lousy real estate market and soft economy are complicating the matter of dividing it equitably in a divorce. Brad Brusenham, a Dallas real estate agent, has helped spouses in the midst of separation and divorce struggling with fears of foreclosure. He says the biggest mistake people make is not doing anything because they're afraid of the situation they're in. In one case, he says, a couple was forced to continue living in their marital home for a few months despite the fact they were legally separated and starting to go through a divorce. In another case, Brusenham negotiated a short sale with a bank on behalf of Sandra. A mother of two had been deserted by her husband and left with a marriage she couldn't afford, based on her salary as an assistant director for a preschool in Plano, Texas. Nobody wanted to help us, said Sandra, whose name has been changed to protect her privacy. Realtors knew we didn't have equity in our new house, and my son was graduating from high school in a month. I wanted him to have some stability. Brusenham negotiated a short sale and extended the time before the family needed to move before, uh, I'm sorry, until after her son's graduation. Sandra now lives in a rented apartment with her children. Collateral damage from the financial fallout of a busted marriage indeed falls hard on kids. In Delaware, financial advisor Carol Arnott says that rising job losses are reducing child support payments and making it hard to keep health insurance in place after a divorce. You can't get blood from a stone, says Arnott, who sees families prioritizing their spending and putting a low rank on health insurance. 
health insurance premiums, which cannot simply be put on a credit card, end up being pushed aside. Wow. 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 This is a good time to not be married, and especially a good time not to be getting a divorce. Holy cow. I mean, you have to wonder how many people are going through this argument right now about the finances, about uh, the uh, the cost of uh, breaking up, about who's going to pay for what. You know, it's one thing when everybody's making a lot of money, but now less and less people are making a lot of money. I mean, can you afford to be married? Can you afford children now? Some of those decisions you made seem pretty stupid now, don't they? Think about it. Some of those decisions seem pretty goddamn stupid. We always tell you boys to go through a gut check. In California, if you are married more than 10 years... You will pay that person alimony for the rest of your life. You have to decide as early as possible. If you think it's not going to work out, you need to get out as quickly as you can. I can't make this any clearer, boys. The cost of a girlfriend, the cost of a wife, these are like other expenses. I don't care how in lust you are or how in love you think you are. There is an expense tied into every one of these decisions you make. Every one of them. You have got to keep from obligating yourself to anything. By the way, I'm not limiting this to women. You shouldn't be signing up for anything with a monthly fee. You shouldn't be signing up for anything that's going to require you to uh, to pay over and over and over for years and years and years. You don't want to raise the possibility that you're going to go bankrupt. Or you're going to lose your job and then you're not going to be able to pay your bills. But you have to start thinking of women as one of the expenses that people have. And it's one you need to eliminate from your balance sheet. Eliminate women from the balance sheet. Eliminate women from accounts receivable. Eliminate them. Have sex with them. Enjoy your time with them. Don't be having babies with them. Don't be giving sperm to them. Don't be spending money on them. Don't be letting them move into your place because they want to save money on, on their rent. Make them stay in their own place. And by the way, another reminder to you boys... A lot of your girls are going to be losing their jobs. Not going, to be able to, not going to be able to afford continuing to pay rent, and they're going to start putting the hit on you to move in. You must, boys, I know you're thinking with the wrong head. You must resolutely resist this. You must say no. No, your girlfriend can't move in with you. And no, no, not her kitty cat, not her puppy dog, not her goldfish. No. She needs to take care of herself, and you shouldn't be paying for anything at all. Trust me when I tell you, it sounds mean, it sounds wrong. I know you know love better than I do, and you're in love like two people have never been in love before. But later on, when we find out that I was right and you were wrong, you'll see that what I was saying was good advice. Please. Look at life like it's the, the federal budget where they have the line out of veto and you can cross out any expenses that uh, the president doesn't want to spend tax money on. You just put a line through them. That's what you need to be doing. Women are a line out of expense. And you need to cross them off the budget. You shouldn't be spending money on them. You shouldn't be letting them move in. And by all means, you shouldn't be giving them your sperm because they'll be more than happy to accept the contribution. Like you're giving them a blank check. 
Does this all make sense to you? Tom like it. Who's that? 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. Tom. 1-800-5800-866. Like it. Tom, I've never... I mean, I've said this a couple times to get late, but I'm saying this right now, and I mean it. I love you, Tom. The Tom Likas Show. It's... The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. This is Corey on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Corey. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Corey. I got a quick question for you. Yeah. I just, I just moved out here from Chicago to the L.A. area. Um, my girlfriend is still in Chicago and wants to move out here. I moved out here for work. And uh, you're telling me not to have girls move in with you. Uh, you know, I'm new out here. Not, it's not that I don't know anybody, because obviously there's plenty of people to meet. Um, but as far as rent comes, rent isn't cheap out here. And I Get a roommate. As a roommate. Get. No, not as a roommate. Okay. Get one. Get, Get a, a roommate. Okay. I, I guess that's a that's a good idea, but like I said, I don't know too many people right now. There and, are there are agencies uh-huh. that will find you a roommate. Okay. And in and many I mean, cases, they there are some agencies that actually do background checks, credit checks, what have you. Do a uh-huh. little googling. Don't play dumb. Yeah. No, that's you know I didn't really think about that. Think um, about it. What do you? What, I mean get a roommate that's kind of sketchy without somebody you know you know but i People mean do I it all the time you. yeah i guess I, I've been and listening. and and you you want to use a roommate agency that does some kind of a credit check or a about background check mm-hmm. by the way you're too young to have a girlfriend 22 yes yeah you know i guess so imagine coming all the way to southern california where the hottest chicks on the planet live <laughs> And you're not allowed to enjoy anything because you got your girlfriend. Right. You know, I guess I was just looking for the easy way out. That's what you were looking for. And, you know, as soon as I moved out here, I wasn't out here a week. And my one of my coworkers told me, Tom Likas Show. And I've been listening to you for about three months now. And I soak up every word. And actually, I've been going out with my girlfriend for about six years. We At the beginning of high school, we started dating. And I just moved out here. You know, and... You've actually changed my mind on that whole idea. I've had a girlfriend for, you know, it feels like half my life. And uh, I just moved out here, and I've been listening to Tom Likas. And, you know, I think I'm going to go go the Tom Likas route. By the way, let me ask you a question. I see you on the screen. You live in Stevenson Ranch, or you're calling from Stevenson Ranch? Uh, well, I live in Stevenson Ranch right now. All right. Uh, let me ask you this question. Yeah. Do you, do you have a relative there? Why are you living there? I don't, actually. Um, I just wanted to move out here. I had a job opportunity. No, but are you, are you living in an apartment or a house? What? It's an, it's an apartment. It's like a condo. You know, Stevenson Ranch, and I know people who live there and love it, but mm-hmm. um, it's not a place for young, unmarried people. Right. It's a family place. Mm-hmm, that's true. I don't know if you're familiar with the TV show Weeds on Showtime. Not really. But the first three seasons of it were filmed in Stevenson Ranch. Really? Yes. It's the quintessential suburban community for families. Mm-hmm. It is not for guys like you. Right. So well, part I, of your problem is that you're you're living in the wrong place. You know, and I, I am looking for somewhere different. Uh, I want to head out to like Ventura or something like that. I'm not really sure yet, but I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize that. To tell you the truth. Well, let me ask you a question. But where is your job? Uh, it's in Valencia. Why would you want to live in Ventura? You know, I don't know. I'm just looking around right now. No. I, I understand it's a it's a commute. Look, it but, starts uh, with I know it starts with V, but it is nowhere near Valencia. Right? No, I know. It's I make my way over there every weekend. So yeah, how hard is that? It sucks. It's about a half hour. Yeah. Um, why wouldn't you want to live like in L.A.? Uh, that would actually probably be longer just with traffic and stuff like that. So, Well, yeah, but there's chicks. 
Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for, Tom. Well, you need to live, you know, a place like Los Feliz, Silver Lake, Echo Park. All of these have pretty easy access to the 5 freeway that would take you back up where you need to go. Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep it in mind. I'm uh, still looking, so I, I wanted to go closer to the beach. Uh, the beach is nowhere near Valencia. Oh, no, I was saying Ventura. Oh, I see, like Oxnard or something, yeah. Right, well, right. Well, you could do that, but uh, that's also not a big chick area. Really? Really. Chicks by the beach is Huntington Beach, Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach, mm -hmm. but not Oxnard Ventura. No. Good to know. We got a lot of listeners there, but uh, I think the listeners know. Hot chicks, not at Oxnard Beach. No. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up, Tom. Nice beach. Yeah. I happen to love it. Yeah. Hot chicks, few and far between. So you would recommend HB and Redondo and all that? It's kind of well, far. No, well, I wouldn't recommend commuting to Valencia from there. I'm just saying for hot chicks. But a way to get hot chicks is not to move to the beach, but to move to a place like uh, Los Feliz or Echo Park or Silver Lake. Okay. And then swing out of the 5 freeway to go to work. Perfect. Northbound against traffic in the morning. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll keep my eyes open, and I appreciate uh, all your help, and I listen to you every day. Corey, good luck to you. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you for the call, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Just a little reminder, now that we are in these economic hard times, these are the times you don't want a woman on the books. You don't want to be adding any commitments at this time with uh, economic uncertainty. No children. No women who want you to spend money on them. Nobody is going to move into your place and start spending your money. This is the wrong time for that. And a good time to get women off the books if you can. Tom on the Tom Ligas Show. Hello. Man, the boys have no idea, Tom. Um, I uh, been through what you just described about um, seven years ago. And while you've been having me wait here, I've added up how much I've paid out so far and how much I have left to go. And, and I'm 360000 out, somewhere between a total of five or 600000 before the checks quit coming out of me. Yeah. And, you know, I was a real successful guy, you know, mid-six-figure income. And the bad news happened, just like you said, it. you know, just right after the peak of the dot-com. And the worst part is, is they take those peak earnings. Hey, 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 you uh, got to watch your mouth, Tom. We... The yes, F word yes. is not permissible on the radio. Okay, that form. Okay, it kills you. And uh, another thing is, uh, as painful as it was, you get through it. And if you follow your rules, even as a guy you're my age, there is life afterwards. That's right. And, and so you, you can get through it, but you can't imagine how much money it is. It's just unbelievable. I spent my 4th of July weekend on my ranch in Santa Barbara County and uh, swimming in my pool, that, which, is dedicated, which is dedicated to all the women I dumped and therefore saved enough money to buy that place. That's outstanding. My, I spent on my yacht... Um, that is no longer named after somebody. Uh huh. So anyway, it's it's like uh, you know if the boys follow your rules, uh, they will do better. So, no doubt that, about that's, it. That's my short uh, call. You're a great motivator. I enjoy uh, listening to you and uh, on on my bachelorhood number two. This is what I would say, Tom. Thank you. There's somebody old enough to know that what I'm saying is. 100% the truth. Not even 98%. 100% the truth. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Franklin of the Tom yes. Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time. Thank you. I got a problem. I've been married about two years, and now i got to, you know, the economy is kind of slow, so i got to work seven days a week to make ends meet. My wife is trying to get me to take a day or two off to spend time with her. And we only have one car now. She takes the car all day. If I need something from work, i got to call her, wait for her. she got to pick me up, back and forth. 
No, I'm trying to end this relationship. It's just going nowhere. Every time I try to end it, she does the crying game, and I get soft. And then it gets, the cycle goes over and over, and I just don't know what to do. So, well, son, you need to sack up. You need <laughs> well, to sack up before she has a baby. I'm telling you. I mean, and she wants a baby badly, but I'm just, I can't, I can't afford it. Just can't do it. Where do you keep your condoms, son? I actually don't use them. What? I've been married two years. I haven't, I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, if you want to get out, that's a very bad idea. Uh, we'll start using them. I'd be using them all the time. Why would you ever stop? Well, she says that it, it, gets, it gives her like a rash or something. Well, well they all say it. that when they want to have a baby. By the way, there's uh, non-latex condoms available as well. They're made by Trojan. I would look into them. Yeah, but this breaking up, I mean, she does this crying game. It drives me nuts. I well, because just... well, you're, you're a pussy and you fall for it. I mean, you have to be looking out for what's best for you. Yeah. I mean, now I am telling her, you, I, I am telling you, and you don't want to hear it. She will get pregnant to keep you. Okay. And well, that okay. is a that is a combustible mix. The idea that she doesn't want you to leave, and she cries, and the idea that she wants to have a baby. Don't you see? One plus one equals two. I understand. She so, will. Here's the thing: is the other thing is that she also she gets she gets very like violent like for instance i'm not a violent guy so she tries she throws things she tries to like if we pick a fight whatever it is she always tries to do it in a public place and it's when is your lease like, when is your lease up son i own the house you own the house i own the house well uh then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to bring a witness and you're going to have to have an attorney you got look. You, you need an attorney for a divorce anyway. You have to have one. Okay. You have to have one. Now a divorce so, would be relatively cheap because you have no children. Do you own this house uh, by yourself, or does she own it with you? No, no. I bought the house. I bought the. I bought everything before the relationship. All right. And do you have a prenup? I no. Why not? Because, because I was I, in love, and I thought this was the one. <laughs> the one when I got it, I just, the one we, we have like an agreement saying what's mine is mine, but apparently it has to be notarized to be a prenup. Notarized? That's be more than that. Oh. She, was she represented by an attorney? No. It's not a prenup. Why were you too cheap to hire an attorney for something so important? I had no idea. I seriously had no idea. I just thought an agreement, and it was signed. It's like a contract. and it's Well, you can try using it, but uh, if I were you, I'd take it to the attorney. Okay, well, now when I go ahead and hire an attorney and say I have this document saying this, this, and that, are they going to pretty much... I know you're not an attorney, Tom, but you, you, you've helped My guess it. is you're not going to have much of a leg to stand on with that. Okay. But every time now, do you, do you think that I should just go to the attorney and just say, hey, I want to get this divorce, and then I slam her with that paper? Because every time I said it's been a crying game and a violent one, it's getting more and more violent. Well, every you, time need to talk, you need to talk to your attorney. And I, if I were you, now you're asking, you, now you're getting into areas that are very sensitive. I am not an attorney. Okay. Well, it's you okay. need one. And that means that tomorrow morning you need to get on the phone and make an appointment. I need to grow some balls and get an attorney. Right. It's hard, but yeah. You have to do it. Got to go. It's Because it's, it's, here's what's going to happen. I don't care how much you crumble when she cries. How's it going to be when she gets pregnant? I'm going to die. She's going to do it. Yeah. She's trying to. Why are you having sex with someone who is violent with you? Well, actually, I haven't touched her in a month. Yeah. She hit you before but, that, though. Yes, she has. Yeah. And See, that's uh, kind of a little thing. Here's the thing. I'm 6'3", 240 pounds. Doesn't matter. I Doesn't just, matter. Why were you having sex with someone who hurts you? Just let it go. You assume someone who's small, you just, you know, let it go. Oh, you're killing me. You better get a goddamn attorney tomorrow. All right, Tom. No more sex with her. No more. 
No, I haven't. That's why like I said ever since I've I've dropped the D bomb on it. Every time I mention it, it's just it turns me off. I don't even want. I haven't physically touched her, or been around her right. for a month. Well, you are going to get an attorney. Do you have an attorney? Have you ever used an attorney for any purpose? Never had an attorney. In my never life. had a car accident. Never had. Uh, never. never had to call Larry H. Parker to <laughs> get uh, compensate. Never had to call an attorney. Never ever had. What about attorney. your parents? Parents are both overseas. All right. How about other relatives? Other people you trust? Friends? Yeah, I have friends, but not attorneys. No, but do they know or use attorneys they like? I should ask because there's yes, I, that you can do tonight. Yeah, that I'll do right now. Yes, and then you will. They, by the way, what they may know is an attorney who's not a divorce attorney, but you can have them call that attorney for a reference. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's crazy it's as I start making less money she just gets more demanding and it's just not making sense like you know you'd figure she should be more you know on my side in a sense but well she's like getting she's getting more demanding because you're not having sex with her you tell her you want a divorce and so she's getting more demanding yes yeah well, times aren't easy as they used to be well pal you made them difficult by marrying a nut Apparently, you did that. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I thought it's because her age, because she's young. It was like an eight-year difference. Why would so that make any she, difference? Because you know, the girls at her age do the same. You cycle don't. Of, you don't marry anybody under twenty-five, and you don't get married if you're under twenty-five. That's how it is. I'm over twenty-five, and she's under twenty-five. But, but neither one of you should be uh, under twenty-five. Learned my lesson the hard way. Hang on a second. Fred, what did you want to say here to Franklin? Yeah, uh, what she's doing is called battery, and she can be arrested. Once you have her arrested, the restraining order, the government, does, the, the cops kick in. You can have her arrested. She gets thrown out of the house for a mandatory seven days. After that, you file in family court. She gets arrested for a... Uh, Stays out of the house for another thirty. Meanwhile, you can take care of your business about your home and what's going on with you personally. Right now, you're a train wreck, right? Waiting to happen. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it's, it's, I mean, it's, I'm sitting on you know a huge amount of assets. I'm not even concerned about that. My biggest thing is, if I call the police, they're going to say you're a six point five guy, do something. This little thing went hundred pounds. She's beating you up. I mean, I, I in my mind, it looks like they're going to laugh at me. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Battery is battery. Size doesn't matter. If you're taking the abuse, then you're. I mean, like the other day, playing victim mentality. That's pure you, victim mentality. Everything coming out of your mouth is. I've heard of all of this before. If, if you want to keep living like that, buddy, go ahead. But no, I'm done. I mean, she took a big bite off of me the other day, like literally piece of meat off my arm. Uh huh. Did you take a picture of it? Did you go to the police and file a report? What no, kind but of the scar is still there. I, listen, as long as you're going to take that kind of abuse, then you deserve what typical victim behavior. Make excuses, crying game. Man, I've heard this before. Seriously, do something about it or you're going to lose everything. Because eventually, she's going to accuse you of what she's doing, and it will stick. If you aren't proactive, you're going to lose everything. No, I don't. I don't. I do not believe in domestic violence for a woman, anything like that. And I've never touched. I actually literally run away from her, just to avoid looking bad. Yeah, and then you go back. And then I go back. Yeah. Good job. Uh, that's about all I got for him, buddy. Just all right, Fred Franklin. Thank you very much for the call. Sound like it? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I support the feminists. Are you a feminist? Yes, I am. Really? Yeah, they're 100 percent equal to men. I don't pay for nothing. It's the Tom Likes Show.
Tom Like Show. At 1 800 5800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Let's say hello here to Charlie on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Hello, Charlie. Um, Tom, uh, my dad uh, introduced me to you eight years ago in 2000, and uh, God rest his soul, he passed away four years ago. After that, my um, my dental insurance and a lot of my health insurance wasn't there. Um, and so I went back, you know, I, I continued school, got my bachelor's, and now I'm getting my master's at UCLA. And I've decided I want to become a doctor, so I'm, like, working two jobs to support myself, even though I have loans and everything. And what's happened uh, recently is that, um, well, first of all, I'm smart enough not to have a girlfriend, thank goodness. And uh, my teeth are going to be costing me $2,000 because I haven't visited a dentist in six years um, with all these crowns I need. And secondly, my, my car was on the street, and... There was a hit and run, or maybe somebody vandalized it, and uh, I'm like in another thousand uh, debt, and I live paycheck to paycheck. I don't know, like, what kind of funding will secure me to live in a good balance for now. Um, and I don't even know what an FU fund is, but it sounded interesting. I, I heard you a few minutes ago say that. Well, an FU fund is a savings account uh, that you uh, build up to the highest balance you can afford to build it up. uh uh-huh. I used to have one that was fifty thousand dollars, wow, and that I would never touch. Uh-huh. And the like, idea was, if I ever lost my job, got in trouble, uh-huh. was hit by a bus, or my boss became a complete creep, I could go in and say, "F you." Yes. Yeah, we all deserve one. Well, it's not a matter of deserving one. Though those who save for one uh, deserve to have it. Everybody needs one. So uh, secure secure money at a high rate of interest, it's like a maybe a liquid CD. Well, a liquid CD is good, sure. Money market account uh-huh. with one of the reliable companies like Vanguard or Fidelity. Yeah, Vanguard, uh, Fidelity. Okay, and for now, um, do you think I should really look, go out there and look for a, for a side job because I'm afraid it would distract me from like my OCHEM classes. Well, you should work as much as you can without distracting yourself. But yes, you should work. You should max out of the amount of hours you work at, up to the point where it, if it would start distracting you, that's where you have to cut it off. Okay. All right, we got to give up some things. we got to sacrifice if we want to get another. Goodbye, Starbucks. Goodbye if you oh. smoke cigarettes. Goodbye. Uh, I'll give you a list. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, of course, I don't, I don't do any of those. Um, you know, it's just gas. It's just really gas that I, I consume a lot. Yeah. I commute. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. And uh, can you take me out old, old school with an African tribal, please? Old, old school. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Keith on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, what up, Tom? Not much, Keith. Well, uh, I have a bit of a problem, but I'm being a man about it. Uh, I built my girlfriend for about five years, going on six. How um, old are you? Twenty-three. How? Oh, yeah. So mistake number one. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I've always, you know, recognized it as a mistake, but then at the same time, I mean, I know you got a lot of guys that call on your show and say, hey, I'm dealing with a good girl, this and this and that, but women are women, and regardless, they're hard to deal with. Um, anyway, uh, well, she's pregnant now. She's about three months. Um, like I said, I mean, it's, I'm in this 50-50 relationship. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why did you let yeah. that happen? Well, I mean, I, I can't explain 100%. I mean, it, it, Yeah, you can. You know, yeah, Take I can, responsibility. Yeah, I, I was a little, yeah, exactly. I was a little irresponsible. I should, you know, I should. I, I always planned on waiting for kids and always wanted to, um, you know, wait and make sure my future is right. You know, make sure that I could actually spoil and take not spoil, but take care of my kid in the right way and, and make sure that everything was in line. But then, 
you know, she got pregnant with my mom's help and, and her mom. And by the way, help. let me ask you a question. Uh, what kind of birth control was she using? She was on the pill, and that's kind of the, what the dilemma was. Is you know, she was on the pill, and then I guess you know their excuses of you know not taking it or forgetting or whatnot. She ended up forgetting, and that one right. time. Right. How convenient. How convenient. Yeah. You've been together five exactly. or six years, and she conveniently forgot to take it. And you, yeah. of course, forgot to use a condom the last five years, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, what, I mean, a, we, what we, a coincidence. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, she, like I said, she's a great girl and all, but, you know, she's just very, un, she misunder, she's just not as understanding as I'd hope she was because I'm a full-time student. I work full-time. And even with that on my plate, you know, and everything else, it's like she still just, you know, makes it, you know, she's always wanted all of my time. And now, I mean, right before she, you know, I found out she was, you know, pregnant, you know, it's like I was pretty much ready to cut her. I was just like, you know, this is too much. It's, it's BS. It's, That's you know, when so they forget to take. That is when their memory takes a vacation. That's when they forget to take the pill. Yeah, pretty much. And I mean, if and, the minute you decide to let them go, you have to stop having sex with them that moment. Exactly. That's when you have to stop. And that's yeah. That's where my problem is. You know, I. You know, I'm, I'm like this fifty-fifty guy. I'm like half like a student, half a jackass. You know, and right. It's like you know, and and, and I've, I've listened to your show for some, some, you know, quite some time. I mean, I've always been, you know, not into having a girlfriend, but yet I've had one, and it's just like this this dilemma in my head. What do you mean you're not into having one? She lives in your address. It's, weird, cause it's like you know, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I, half the time I'm living this single life, and then the other half it's like I'm I'm living this life in a relationship, and and. And I don't want it because I know I'm young and I know I'm, you know, tired and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to take care of me first. I mean, that's always been my primary goal, but now I have this kid on the way. No, going, it hasn't. It has not been your primary goal because yeah. someone else lives at your house. Exactly. And that's, that's where the, that, that's where the fight in my mind comes is just like I'm, you know, here I am, you know, I claim to be this strong, you know, headstrong guy like, oh, I'm not going to let a, you know, a bitch, you know, this and this and that, whatever, but then, she reality. just she just took over driving the bus, pal. Exactly. You're now, now you're a passenger, and you let it happen. Yeah, and I realize, you know, and, I, and like I said, I'm a man, and I'll take care of whatever's thrown at me. But what, what I'm calling for really is like, let's say down the down the road, because I don't want to get married. I've never really wanted to get married, but yet, just like a kid came, I mean, next thing you know, she's gonna be like, "Where's my ring?" You know, and then if that doesn't come, who knows? It's like, is it going to No, be that's, like, gonna, well, that's what's going to happen. That is what's going to happen if you keep living with her. So what do I do, though? Get I out. Mean, but then my kids, what's what scaring me now, which I know a lot of guys, even my dad, it's like he's a prime example. It's like he has four kids now, not including me, and, you know, four young ones, and he's just kind of stuck, and he married this, this, you know, one girl, you know. Well, the apple doesn't young. fall. the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? Yeah. You are him, Junior. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm realizing right now. But I, I still feel like I have a chance, and I know that I'm a strong, you know, I have a strong will and a strong mind, and I still feel like I have a chance to not reverse this effect or whatever, but, you know, make it play out to my best interest, you know. And then I just need to know kind of, you know, advice on what to do and how to do that. And I know you say get rid of her, okay, but then... As far as my kid, and, and, and I know you said you're probably going to say get an attorney or whatever, which I have looked into one in case anything does go down or she's like, wants to call AWOL and say, hey, I'm taking the kid. And that's my biggest fear now is now I have a kid involved, and I've always vouched to myself that I'm going to be, you know, a great father no matter what. I'm not going to let no woman come in between me and my kid. Um, but it's still a huge dilemma that I'm facing right now. Well, you're going to stay there. And she's going to own you. And she's going to get pregnant again, too, because you're continuing oh, to have God. sex with her. You're continuing oh, to have sex with her. Right? Well, we'll see. I, you know. Are you are you continuing to have sex with her? Yes. Right. So once she has this one, she'll forget to take the pill again. Write it down. Thanks for the call. The Tom Likas Show.